Limitless, and glory to God, amen. Well, welcome back to our second part series on the Limitless of God, amen. And I'm trusting, glory to God, that you enjoyed our first part series, and I'm praying to God that you did contact somebody else, amen, and tell them that you need to tune in. So we want you to just do a little evangelistic work, okay? Glory to God. Well, once again, let us set this uh, atmosphere again, and let us go before God in prayer. So, Father, we do thank you for another opportunity that come in to the homes and to the hearts of your people, Lord God. And, God, we submit right now, God, that the Holy Ghost would, you know, open up their hearts and minds, that they be receptive to your word, and that they will put your word to practice, because you said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving our own selves. So I pray right now, Lord God, that they will, will be blessed and that they were blessed by our first part series. And I give you the glory and the honor for it. On behalf of my pastor, glory to God, amen. We thank God for this opportunity and your wisdom and your direction. So we praise you in advance for it right now. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, and thank God. Glory to God. Well, listen, glory to God. We're going to get right back, amen, into our second part series. Amen, and I'm trusting, glory to God, once again, that it was a blessing uh, to you, and uh, I indeed, amen, I'm telling you right now, I indeed enjoyed bringing it forth, but I also uh, love it because I have lived some of these things out, amen. I done had to trust God, hallelujah, because I found out that he's able to deliver me. Well, listen, let's get right back into this Thing. Now, I did tell you that once I set the atmosphere, set the stage, that I'm going to give you some personal way how you can apply this limit, this God to your life, okay? Now, first of all, let's, let's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to um, Psalm 72, 12 through 14. Psalm 72, 12 through 14. Now, we're still talking about uh, without limits now. Now, now that you know God, how God operates, then here's how I want you to start applying it. Now, in Psalm 72, 12, and uh, it says here, now, if you got your faith in him now, this is what he said he would do. Psalm 72, 12, uh, he said, for he shall deliver the needy. Listen. When he crieth, the poor also, and him that has no helper, he shall spare the poor and the needy, and shall save the souls of the needy. Verse 14, he shall redeem their soul from, de from uh, deceit and violence, and precious shall be their blood in their sight. Listen, he shall redeem their souls from deceit and violence, and precious shall their blood be in their sight. Listen, <laughs> after you found out, glory to God, that God is a limitless God, that there's no restriction on God, and that God is able, hallelujah, is to deliver you now he says here that he will deliver. Glory to God. I love this passage of scripture because I discovered this years ago. He said, he said that the God will deliver them. That's the main thing is that he said when they cry it, for he shall deliver the needy when he cry it. Even though, glory to God, God has the ability is to do this, we have to cry out unto the Lord. And he says, C-R-I-E-T-H. It means continue to cry and ask God for help that you can't help yourself with. Pastor was talking to us about push, pray until something happened. Continue to cry out unto God because there's no limit on him. You hear what I'm saying? And so he, he said he would deliver them. We already found out that he can do that. You hear what I'm saying? 
There's no bound, there's no restriction on him. So why not cry out unto God? You hear what I'm saying? <clears throat> so this is what we ought to do. We ought to cry out unto him. Glory to God. And, and uh, uh, I, I tell you what, let's go to Job. Let's go to Job, uh, the 29th chapter, verses 12. Job, the 29th chapter, verse is 12. He says, because I delivered the poor who cried out, the fatherless and the one who has no helper. I delivered the poor who cried out, and the fatherless and the one who has no helper. Now that we know, glory to God, that God is the one that have no boundaries or that have no restriction, he says, I deliver the poor. You know what I'm saying? Now, you could be, you could be poor in errors that you cannot do anything for yourself. You can still be poor. You can be hopeless and helpless. You know what I'm saying? So, so God just say, listen, you can come to me because there are no restrictions. There's no boundaries on what I can do. We already discovered that and set in the stage in Luke 137, okay, in Matthew 19, 26. So he says here, he said, now, I can do this. I will deliver. I will deliver. God will deliver you, hallelujah, in a time of trouble. In a time of trouble, he shall hide us in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide us. You hear what I'm saying? So this is what we ought to do. Glory to God. Now, here's, the, here's, the, here's one of the things that I had uh, written in my book here. Hallelujah. Now, here's an issue here, and people need deliverance from. We have to get, we got to let the Holy Spirit get us out of financial mess of some of us that we got ourselves in. Yes, we need to cry out to God and tell us, get us out of a financial mess that we got ourselves in. You see, that's what we need to do. That's one of the things that I wrote in my book. Is that, and that's how I really, I was really faced with a situation that I got myself in a financial mess that I got myself in. So I told God, look, I need your help. I have gotten myself in a financial situation that I can't get myself out of. You hear what I'm saying? What I was seeing was I was seeing zero in my account, okay? Now, here's what, here's what you have to do. You got to say, listen, God, I don't see nothing in my account. I don't see nothing in there but zeros. Because of my earthly wisdom, my earthly wisdom got myself in a financial jam. And so because you ain't no boundaries on you, I need your help. I'm crying out to you. I need you to help get me out of financial mess that I got myself in. I know I'm talking to somebody out there right now. Hallelujah. And so what he, 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 when, you, when you're in a financial mess and you, and you know you the one got yourself in it, he simply said, confess your fault one with the other and then pray for one another that you may be healed. So you might need help in your law responsibility and your spending. I know I'm talking to somebody out there because of the fact you are a bad money manager. You hear what I'm saying? And so <laughs> you might need God help in it. You hear what I'm saying? And so you need to acknowledge to God that, look, I need you to take care of this because I acknowledge the fact that I can't do it myself. I yield it to my own understanding. I need your help in this era. God is saying that I will deliver you. Hallelujah. The only thing you got to do is cry out unto me. 
and tell me what's going on. And so God didn't say, I, I want you to deliver me. I want you to acknowledge that you the one did it. And you're going to need to say, I can't handle this, God. God said that I will come along and deliver you because there's no restriction on me. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and so, when, when uh, and, and I'm just dealing with this financial issue here because that this is one of the things that uh, I, I know in my spirit, man, right now that somebody got themselves in a financial bind by leaning to their own understanding. And so I'm going to do a shift here. Glory to God. I'm ministering to somebody right now. I know this is a true fact. And so what you need to do is say, look, God, I messed up. I messed up. Cry out unto him. Now you're looking for deliverance now. Don't care about what somebody else is saying. You go to God alone and tell him that you messed up. Once you confess this to God, then God is saying, listen, I understand, okay? I'm telling you this. I'm telling somebody this right now. I understand. And so, A, you took side with God against yourself. That's the quickest way God going to come and deliver you. Hallelujah. If for you to take side with God against your own self, that you have leaned to your own understanding. Hallelujah. And so the first thing you got to do is cry out unto him. And you're crying out unto him because he's going to deliver you. You hear what I'm saying? You ain't coming to God because you know you're not going to get into deliverance. God is a merciful God. He will deliver you. <laughs> so this whole topic is about you getting delivered. You hear what I'm saying? But I want you to understand when you go to who you going to, Ain't no restrictions on him. Ain't no boundaries on him. And so you can come to God with anything. Hallelujah. So if you're in a financial situation and you got yourself in a financial situation, I need you to, uh, let's go to, I'll tell you what we do. Let's go to Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs 11 chapter uh, verses 22 through 26. Proverbs 11, chapter 22 to 26. Now, <clears throat> even though there's no restriction on God, you must do something yourself, okay? In order to get yourself out of this situation, you must do something yourself. He says, okay, let, let's go here. Uh, let's go for, starting at verse 22 through 26. He says, as a jewel of gold is in a swine snort, so is a fair woman, which is without discretion. Now, verse 23 says, Desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. Verse 24, he said, There is that, that scatter and yet increase it. And there is that withhold it more is me. But it tended to poverty. Oh, that's what happened. That's what happened. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm on your seat. And there is that withhold it more is me. But it tend to poverty. A person that is not given. You know what I'm saying? I just want to bring this in. A person that is not given. First of all, you probably got in, in a, a situation because you wasn't given what's due God. Oh, yeah, I'm going there. You wasn't given the what's due God, okay? God done bless you, amen, and then you were holding God. You tipping God. God ain't tipping you when he first wake you up in the morning. Are you hearing me? And so we need to give all to God. <clears throat> now, I always quote this scripture here, Haggai 2.8. He says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, said the Lord. Listen, and even the cattle on a thousand hills is his also. So therefore, uh, don't lead yourself to poverty, okay? Now, what you do, what you do need to do is verse 25. 
or Proverbs 11, 25. He said, the liver soul shall be made fat, and he that watered shall be water also. He that would hold it corn, listen, the people shall curse him, but blessings shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. God is saying here that he that watered himself would be watered. And so maybe you got yourself in a financial bind because you are not liberally giving. And I'm talking about giving of your substance, giving of your time, giving of stewardship. That comes up on the stewardship. You know what I'm saying? So maybe you got yourself in a situation that, uh, you know, uh, you, you're not being fair with God, you're not being fair with mankind. And so we need to ask God at this time, if we have been doing this, if have mercy upon us, okay? Have mercy upon us. That's what we need to ask God for. Even though we are not fulfilling the scriptures, we need to come along and uh, say, look, God, okay, I'm not being fair with you. Amen. And so, therefore, I need, I need, I need your mercy. And so, um, you know that you're not sin and come short of the glory of God. <clears throat> we still talk about the, un, you, you, the, the non-restriction, but I'm trying to show you that in serving God, you're going to have to do some things yourself. Amen. Because otherwise, God cannot uh, operate in this non-boundary way with you, even though he limitless. But we can put, cause God to be limit in our action. And so, if we have not been a good steward, here's what uh, Proverbs 28 and 13 says. Proverbs 28 and 13 says, he that covered his sins shall not prosper. Glory to God. But whoever confess it and forsake them shall have mercy. So what you done messed up? So what you have not been a good steward? But don't try to cover it up and expect God is to blow on it. Come on and confess your shortcoming before God. He said, but he that confess his sin and forsake them, to them it would get pity. You would get compassion. You would untie God's hands at that particular time. And so that's what he tell us. He said, listen, come on. Say, listen, I need you, God. I need you. And so untie God's hands so that he, his boundaries can overflow with you. He can, you can take the restrictions off of him. Now, <laughs> Can't nobody stop him except myself by my action. You know, you got to understand God is all powerful. But because of my circumstantial will of my earthly wisdom, I can stop him from uh, taking me further and further in my, in my life. You know what I'm saying? But there's boundaries, glory to God that God wanted to take us, he wanted to take us further because can't nobody stop him. If God wanted to bless you, he will bless you. But I must play a, a part in it, my own self. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, we need to tell God, look, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Hallelujah. Maybe I didn't get it right. But God, if you give me the wisdom then I will be able to do it right the next time because I don't need to have no restrictions on my life. I know what you got planned for me. Glory to God. I know what everybody know what uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, okay? I know, what you, I know you know what it says, but let's, well, look, I tell you what, I want to go, I want to go here because we always stop off, we always stop off there. And the Holy Ghost just brought this to my remembrance about Jeremiah uh, 29 and 11. You know, and he said, I know the thoughts. I know the plans. I know all of this. But I want to not stop there because there's something there 
that I discovered is when people stop off at just verse 11. So in Jeremiah 29, 11, God simply says this, and this is one of the famous ones that we always uh, quote and say. God, God simply says that, listen, he says this, he said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Now, God ain't got, God, listen, ain't no boundaries with God, ain't no restriction on God. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say it the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. You hear what I'm saying? To give you an expected end. God got a good end for me. But however, though, I can limit God. You hear what I'm saying? I can limit God by not trusting in him. But verse, uh, uh, but verse 12 says, okay, since how God knows the thought he has toward me, it give me an expected end. But verse 12, don't just stop at Jeremiah 29 11. It says, then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. You, you see what I'm saying? You got to go to the next level in this Jeremiah text here, okay? <laughs> he said, and I will hearken unto you. And verse 13 says, and ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. That's what God is saying in this unlimited thing. And I will be found of you, verse 14. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captivity. Listen. Hallelujah. You got to read. Don't just stop off at Jeremiah 29 and 11. Go all the way down to Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. You see, because there's something that I must do. I must call on the Lord. I must pray unto him. Hallelujah. He said, then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. Listen, God said, listen, ain't no restriction on me, but this is what you got to do. This is what I got to do, okay? And so <laughs> then once you do all of this, and I'm going right back to that person again, glory to God, hallelujah, that's having problem with their checkbook. We need to, we need to, <laughs> The, ask God, look, God, I got zero in my checking account. I'm telling you right now, I need your help. In my wallet, hallelujah, I got credit card debts. I'm talking to somebody out there. I need your help in, the, in this area. I need you to call a little harvest. Is to come to me, to my house. Listen. My checkbook, my wallet, my IDI, my 401k. All God is saying, now, look, call unto me. Ain't no restriction on me. You can come and ask me for anything. Hallelujah. I need you to call a harvest, God, is to come from the north, come from the south, east, and west. Call unto him at that time. Hallelujah. <laughs> he know what he got planned for you. There's no restriction. There's no boundaries. Are you hearing me? And so God is saying, listen, call unto me. Hallelujah. Listen, you even, you, listen, you need to say, look, God, I need you to rebuke the devourer for my sake. I need you to do that. Listen, when in Malachi, the third chapter, verse 8 through 12, he said, he talked about, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Hallelujah. If you've been fair with God, 
You've been fair with God in your giving, in your stewardship, in your time, hallelujah, in your finances, hallelujah. Then God is saying that, look, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. There ain't no limit on me. Ain't no boundaries on me. Hallelujah. I am limitless. And so God will come along and do this. Hallelujah. If you just take the restriction off of God. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. So, so I want you to understand, hallelujah, that uh, nothing is too hard for God. Hallelujah. Nothing is too hard for God. You got to get a hold to this thing because of the fact that I wanted to just encourage uh, the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And he told us it's to ask and it be, should be given unto us. Seek and we shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. For everyone that ask it, receive it. Everyone that knock it, the door will be opened unto them. And everyone that seek it, S-E-E-K-E-T-H, continue to seek until you find. Because of the fact that I am, ain't no bounds on me. Ain't no restrictions on me. All you got to do, yes, come back to me. Say, listen, God, day is Wednesday. Hallelujah. I don't see it yet. It ain't manifested yet. Go back to God and tell him that. Hallelujah. A delay, uh, one of the things that I, I, I had put in, in one of my bookmarkers, I, I wrote down, I made up this bookmarker and said, a delay is not a denial. It's just a total package that ain't been put together yet. A delay is not a denial. It's just a total package that ain't been put together yet. So you can depend upon God, hello, is to come through for you. There's no restrictions on God. There's no limit on God. God is a possibility God. I know you heard this before, but Jesus said, again, I say unto you, and I'm praying to God that this time, this time, hallelujah, that you will, you will take the limits off of God. I am. I'm taking the limits off of him. He's a possibility God. I'm hoping, glory to God, that this has been a blessing to you. Amen. And, and for like I said, I just, uh, out of my book, Stand on the Word of God Ministries, uh, Volume 1, Chapter 6, is what I was really uh, teaching out of. Glory to God. And for those, amen, that uh, have the book, go back and just take a look at it. If not that you already read it, then I water this thing. I gave you a little more details in it today than I have written in my book. Hallelujah. So every now and then, I, I like to go back and take some of my own material and just share it so that God can replenish me. That's why I did it. So God can replenish me. So again, glory to God. I just want to thank God, amen, for this opportunity is to come into your home. Then I pray that you was blessed. Hallelujah. And my, as, as my uh, host say, Pastor Sanders, glory to God, my spiritual father, my spiritual covering. Amen. Uh, again, I just want to thank him for an opportunity. Hallelujah. Is to operate upon a, his apostolic anointing. Hallelujah. Because remember, the anointing flows downward. Glory to God. So again, I want to thank God for you. And I just want to pray, amen. Again, I want to conclude this with a special blessing. Father, in Jesus Christ's name, God, I bring every listener before you right now. And I pray, God, that they will take the limits off of you, take the boundaries off of you, take the restriction off of you. Because ain't nothing too hard for you. You are a possibility, God. And I acknowledge this, God. And so, God, I praise you in advance, hallelujah, for what you're going to do in their lives. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, and thank God. Well, once again, glory to God, we are here because we're here to live, love, and serve. And I want to uh, always reiterate that if this 
uh, program has been a blessing to you, this study has been a blessing to you, then we ask that you would sow a seed into the ministry, our media ministry, amen. And so any amount, we'll take any amount, glory to God. And I say that if we don't have any pens, we don't have any cups, this is my cup, if we don't have any cups to give you, hallelujah. But we know that God will bless you, amen, in your giving and support the media ministry. So again, we want to thank God for you and I say until our next Bible study, be blessed of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Nothing, baby. Let's go after the ball, fellas. Let's go nuts.